Alright? And you're done. Alright. Next one. When you see a binomial whose degree is greater than 2, in this case 4, you're going to think of a difference of two squares. Alright? That is a difference of two squares that's going to factor into 1 plus sine squared x. 1 minus sine squared x. Cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. What do the 1 minus sine squared x's do to each other? Cancel out. And you're left on the left hand side with 1 plus sine squared x. So you're kind of done. Which means now you got to focus on the right hand side. The right hand side has a fraction with a monomial, so we're going to divide through. So we're going to do cosecant squared x over cosecant squared x plus 1 over cosecant squared x. Whenever I divide something by itself, they cancel out, giving me 1. And whenever I have 1 over something, that's a reciprocal. The reciprocal of cosecant squared is sine squared. The two sides are exactly the same, and I have completed the problem. So if you see four terms, it's grouping. If you see two terms with a degree greater than 2, it's difference of two squares. If you see a trinomial, like you do in number 10, if you see a trinomial, again, where the degree is not equal to 2, in this case, 4, this reviews algebra 2 from last year. You're factoring higher degree polynomials. That factors just like a trinomial. The difference is it factors into this, sine squared x and sine squared x. Other than that, it's exactly the same. The two numbers that multiply to negative 5 that add up to 4 are plus 5 and negative 1. By now, hopefully you realize sine squared x minus 1 is in the wrong order. In other words, if it was 1 minus sine squared x, it would be cosine squared x. It's not a big deal, it's still cosine squared x, but what do I put smack dab in the front of it because of that? Negative, good. And I'm still multiplying by sine squared x plus 5. Now is once again, so I'm going to move this in front of there, so I don't get confused with subtraction. Now, again, this comes from reading the problem in critical thinking. That's a binomial. This is a binomial. I want to keep that format, the binomial, but I got something on the outside. What property that you've been using since the early days of school she kicked in for you to simplify on the left hand side. I want to keep the binomial, I got a number on the outside. What do I do? Why is this distributive? Distributive. Negative times a positive is what? Negative. Other than that, there's not a lot I can do. Negative times a positive is negative 5 cosine squared x. At that point, are the two equations exactly the same? Are the two expressions? Yes. That's what you need to start being able to do. Identify things as you go along that are going to make your life easier. Sine pi over 2 minus x times tangent x. As soon as you see pi over 2 minus x, you know it's a co-function. Alright? Sine does not have a co, so I add it. So this becomes cosine x, tangent x. I rewrite the tangent x as sine x over cosine x. What do the cosine x's do to each other? And you have sine x on the left, and you got sine x on the right.
sine of negative x over tangent of negative x. Sine of negative x times cotangent of negative x. Sine negative x times cosine of negative x over sine of negative x. What do the sine of the negative x's do to each other? Cancel out. Cosine negative x. Alright, and just so you know, it's a small mistake. That negative shouldn't be there to get the point across. Remember that the negatives of these and odd identities work with sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. With cosine, the negative goes away. So with cosine and secant, the negative goes away. And then you're done by even odd identities. All right, so that is your quiz for.